gents. I've had the pleasure in working with this guy the last few years for a great charity that he runs, and he's been very, very supportive. Wasn't on the bill to a few weeks ago, and he said he'd come up and support us. He was a legend when we was growing up, and I know all of you as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please give it up for the legend that is Mr. Jim Davison! Thank you very much. How are you? For those of you with children in, relax. <laughs> now it's clean night tonight, ladies and gentlemen, because of uh, what's been going on here. And it's nice to see the whole of the entire tree estate <laughs> are here. And there's some beautiful women in Dartford. Look at you. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Beautiful. All right, love? <laughs> right, so... Let me tell you, I've got 10 minutes to talk to you, so I thought I'd have a moan about a couple of things. First thing, it took me four and a half hours to get here from um, Southampton tonight, because the M3 is shut, M25 shut, M4 jammed. Not good, is it, really? And they wonder why we break the law on the way back. I'd, I've got more points uh, than Charlton Athletic, actually, to be... <laughs> and I'm a Charlton fan, so I can say that. And I, I, I remember leaving here once and going down the A3. It was a couple of wives ago when I lived in... <laughs> Portsmouth, and I got nicked by five speed cameras. I did five of them down, down the A3, and I only paid for one, because I actually persuaded the judge that I was only speeding once, <laughs> that I never slowed down. So, I, but, but what I want to tell you about is, is anyone recording, uh, who's got Sky, Sky thing? Who's got Netflix? Right, okay. What's your favourite box set? You can speak, it's all right. <laughs> okay, have you watched, do you watch any of the American box sets? Did anyone watch a thing called um, Justified? No, well, it wasn't called Justified. Who was the bloke with the cowboy hat who was here singing a minute ago and he was the marshal and shot people? Well, I never heard the word that that bloke said. Have you not noticed, right, that things are different now on television? Did you watch Line of Duty, where the policeman said, <laughs> You getting that? I said, I keep saying to my wife, what the f what did he say? <laughs> and the American women, <laughs> I've, I've got to put subtitles on, right? And there's no English subtitles on English television, so I have to put Korean on, like toenail clippings and bogeys flicked on the screen. I just want to scream around and swear around, right? Right, so I thought, I'm going, my wife said, you're going deaf. I said, I'm not going deaf. It's these, they mumble. And they do mumble, don't they? Yeah. Right, good. I'm glad you did. So when I had a flat in London, down the, down the end of the road was John Lewis's. And I walked down there up to third floor is all the televisions bit, you know, where, the, where you go. And, uh, and there was a man there, uh, political correctness, for, he was light on his feet. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> And he said, yes. I said, I can't hear, a I said, I can't hear <laughs> what people are saying on the television. He went, oh, I know. They mumble, don't they? I said, they do mumble. He said, what television have you got? I said, I've got the uh, Samsung 46-inch, uh, or 4D, all singing, all dancing. He went, oh. Mm. <laughs> well, like that, mm. I said, I bought it here. Oh. <laughs> and he said, Did you, have you bought a sound bar? That I'm quite old, me. Uh, technology is no good to me at all. The other night, by mistake, I switched on the adult version. You know, you get that thing on Sky News, you can flick along, can't you? Adult, and there's a babe station, this woman there like that, half naked, with a phone. And I was a bit, I'd had a couple of drinks, so I thought, I'll phone her up. <laughs> and she said, what do you want me to do for you? I said, go behind the sofa and hide. She said, why's that? I said, because my wife's coming down the stairs and I've lost the remote control. <laughs> right? So I'm not, I'm not great with, with stuff. And he said to me, a sound bar is a speaker that, 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 you have, that comes with the television. I said, well, it didn't come with my television. I said, no, I can't have speakers. Why? Or I said, my wife, she don't have speakers. She don't like speakers in the house because of the wires. Why? 
Well, I said, my dog's taken to dragging his ass along the carpet with his front feet. I know that's not relevant. <laughs> Have you ever seen them dogs do that? Why do they do I often wonder why they did that until I tried it myself one night. <laughs> no, they all do. From ages past, dogs never change. Apart from, you never see white dog poo anymore, do you? What happened to that? Do a white dog Anyway. I forgot where I was. He was talking to the bloke who was light on his feet. Oh, that's right, yeah. And I said, I can't have speakers in the room. I said, I used to have a surround system. I said, my wife's there doing her ironing, right? And suddenly she said, right, something's going mental here. There's birds tweeting behind me. I said, there's birds behind me tweeting. I said, no, no, that's the speakers. Well, turn them off. I'm trying to watch the bloody film. I said, that is the film. It's the sound effect. It's the sound effects like that, you see. She said, well, it's getting on my bloody nerves. I said, no, look, we're in the jungle. We're not in the bloody jungle. We're in the front room here. I said, no, this is the jungle. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Can you still say that? This is... <laughs> this is Arnold... Arnold Schwarzer person, and he's in the jungle. Suddenly, a helicopter went... <laughs> and the dog chased it out to the kitchen. That was the end of that. The reason that she's worried about the dog dragging his ass across the carpet and catchy cases, catches his gonads in the speaker wire and electrifies himself. <laughs> She thinks there's electricity going through there. Why do you have to have wires for speakers? Anyway, I, I said to this bloke, he told me how to plug it in. Well, I didn't know that. I, he said to me, he said, you don't have to plug it into the television. <laughs> but, but, but it's a speaker for the television, but you don't plug it in. No. <sighs> No wires, no. What does it do then, guess? <laughs> no, has anyone got one of these? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, apparently the speaker talks to the television or the television talks to the speaker with its blue teeth. <laughs> right? Well, mine ain't listening. Because my television's going, before I just run a while, sorry about that. And the speaker says, I can't hear a thing you're saying. <laughs> so the, the thing is, right, I told him about what the man said. At the end of Justified, 27 episodes for seven series, I've watched that. And right at the end, where you really want to know what's going on, he points the gun at the bad guy, and the bad guy, uh, and he said, Tell me who'd done it, shorty. Oh, he actually went, Tell me who'd done it, shorty. <laughs> And a bloke looked up, I thought, oh, I can't believe I'm actually going to find out. And he went, go through this, yeah. Go through this, Wind it back. Go through Sign it up. Go through this, yeah. Backwards. Go through this, So I asked the old light on his feet. He said, oh, that program is called Justified. It's fantastic. Did you like it? I said, yeah, I really did. He said, oh, you're the only one I've ever met who's ever liked that, like I do. I said, what did he say at the end? Oh, a lot of people have asked me that. I said, what is it? He said, well, he pointed the gun and said, who did it, shorty? And the man said, because we're going to do that. Now, I'm going to go in a minute. Before I go, I'm going to tell you what happens if you're driving home drunk. Or you're... You might think you're over the limit. If you get pulled up, first of all, do not get out of the car and face the policeman. Okay? You don't want to do that. It's bad news. Because the policeman said to me, Mr. Davidson, you're staggering. I said, oh, well, I find you strangely attractive as well. I said. <laughs> I'll tell you briefly the perils of my life. <laughs> I used to know a bloke called Bob Todd from the Benny Hill show. He did my show. And I bumped into him and Tommy Cooper, who were the world champion drinkers at a pub called The Anglers in Teddington. And I got drunk as a sack, but I had to leave them because I had to go down to Hereford to do, of all things, to open the camp or a fate in the SAS camp in Hereford. Special Forces soldiers. So I had to be there, otherwise they'd come and get me. <laughs> I had to be there in the mornings. I thought I'd drive down. And I had this old Rolls Royce. You know, you buy silly things when you're young and just get rich. And, and <laughs> you've had them, I know. Now, you're better off with that, all agro. Anyway, so I now had to go. I shouldn't have gone. I was that drunk. I should have gone to bed. But I ended up on the hard shoulder of the M4. In the pit. It was raining heavily. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, I, uh, and I'm in a traffic jam, and I'm busting to have a tinkle. And I'm ashamed to say, I get out of the car like this, 
and I had a tinkle up the back wheel. And you know these days your life ends in slow motion? Well, my life ended in slow motion with a police car coming down the yard shoulder. And I thought... <laughs> but I could not stop weeing. I know it's the lower the tone. You know when you've got to go and you, go, you can't stop? I don't know how you girls go at all. It must be like wringing out a flannel. But... <laughs> but... There's two policemen, and one waddled up and he said to me, is that your car? And I said, no, I nicked it. <laughs> Thinking humour will get you out of the, out the trouble. And um, this is the cleanest I've ever been in my life. <laughs> and I'm not being paid for it. Anyway, so he said to me, he said, I've reason to believe you've been drinking. Now, I'm having a wee on the hard shoulder in broad daylight on the M4, and this idiot only has reason to believe I've been drinking. And he asked me to blow into a breathalyzer bag. This was 1978. Do you remember the old breathalyzer bags? I said, I don't need that. Officer, I've got a bag at home. Tell me whether I'm drunk or not. <laughs> and he said, right, refusing to, to give a sample. I said, I'll give you a sample of urine. There's no problem there. I'm been on the, I've been drinking heavily. So he went back to the car, got a little bottle like that, and put a few drips in it, made me sign it, fastened it, put the lid on, took it back to this constable, in the car <laughs> and said take that back to the station and get it analysed I'll go with Mr Davidson in his car so the, the chap knew who I was and he grabbed me like that with the police cars reversed up the slipway like that gone, it's now raining quite heavily and he's walked me back to the car and sitting in the driver's seat is my driver <laughs> right? and the policeman and the policeman said Who's that? I said, that's my chauffeur. <laughs> I said, you don't, you don't think I drive around as drunk as this, do you, officer? And he went all nice then, didn't he? He said, oh, that makes a difference, doesn't it, sir? I said, yes, the difference is you've got to walk back to the bloody police station, haven't you? <laughs> now, a couple of reasons I'm here. I like coming back to Dartford. I grew up round here. And uh, I'm a Charlton fan. We're all here. <laughs> and, and the gentleman who's putting this on is a friend of mine called Paul Shedd. And he's a, he does a great deal of help for my charity, which is a veterans charity. And he's, he's very good at helping me. So it was a pleasure to come along. And the, another reason I'm here is, is to see an old friend who I haven't seen for quite a while. Uh, he's been very ill over the last forever. He's been... <laughs> He got, he, had a, he got ill, is the best they, uh, and, and thought, well, that's the end of him, we all thought. But this is the man that never, ever give up. And I've worked with him over the years, and it really is a pleasure to see him back. I mean, I don't know how, how he gets from A to B, let alone to come on stage and speak to you people for charity tonight. And I'm sure you'll welcome him, as I do. A great entertainer and a great friend. Please wen welcome back. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Ladies and gentlemen, Duncan Norvell. And that's Charlie. Never goes anywhere without Charlie. See you, folks. Bye-bye. Is this on? Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, not yet. Right. <laughs> Just, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like ants and deck, isn't there? <laughs> oh, thanks, Jim, for that. A wonderful man, isn't he? I've known Jim a few years now, and he's been great. Ah, oh, nice to be back. I used to be here years ago. I used to come to Dartford. I said, chase me here a few times. <laughs> I never come back after that. <laughs> I've had to change the catchphrase now from chase me to push me. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, there's a lot of acts changing the catchphrases now. I heard about Tommy Cannon this week. Taxman's got him for 800,000. They've changed the act. They call it shotgun and pellet now. <laughs> and their catchphrase has changed to sign on Tommy. <laughs> 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 uh, do you like the shoes? I got them off a drug dealer. 
I don't know what he laced them with, but I've been tripping all day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, actually, I found him outside of a mosque. You <laughs> 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 have yeah, to go to the mosque on a Sunday. It's good fun. It's like TK Maxx. You have to sort through the shit, but you find a good pair eventually. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and if you ever go in a mosque, it's a bit tricky. Especially if you like leapfrog, like I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Hmm. Some lovely ladies down here. <laughs> Stand up, love, and have a look round. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she did. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, what a time I've had of it. But it's nice to come back on stage and do something, I suppose. No pictures, though, please. Security reasons. Social security. <laughs> uh, yeah. My neighbours are in. I've got my neighbour in. He's a lovely Indian guy next door to me. He's great. He always makes me curry on a Friday night. That's nice of him, isn't it? Because he knows I can't cook. <laughs> Maybe one last Friday, it was bloody awful. <laughs> Ooh, full of ginger. Tasted awful, and I miss that cat. Silly, <laughs> 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 oh, innit? And I watched that advert last night. Did you see it? That one for Fairy Liquid. The new advert. Yeah, it was a, a girl from Dagenham did it. She got the part to do the advert. It was so good. It was on last night after the news. She's there at the sink washing up and her little daughter's there. And her daughter says, Mummy, you've got lovely soft and smooth hands. Is it fairy liquid that does that? She says, no, I'm 14. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, I live in Romford now. I used to live in Yorkshire. Couldn't understand them. Anybody in from Yorkshire? Any Yorkshire folk in? I stood behind the queue once at the airport at Heathrow, and there were these two there that had come from Doncaster. And they sat there and I heard one turn around to the other, hey George, we're going to going to Benidorm. Forty years we've been going to Blackpool and now we're going to Benidorm. What a lovely surprise. He says, I know Mary. Going to Benidorm tonight. Tonight. We'll be outside the hotel drinking that pina colada. Why, it's going to be wonderful. She says, I know, George. Are you all right? He says, ah. He says, I wish I'd have brought piano, though. She said, piano, George? Why did you want to bring the piano? He said, the tickets are on it. Yeah, in Romford, when I first moved down here, funny, my neighbours, they come round and introduce themselves. Four o'clock in the morning, knocking on the door. Good job I was up playing me drums, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I used to do impressions, ladies and gentlemen. And when I had my stroke, I lost a bit of my voice. But slowly it's coming back. And uh, hang on. Right. Yeah, I'm all right. Just make sure Jim left the break on. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. <laughs> Ooh, it's a drop, ain't it, love? <laughs> so I'm going to 
do a few now, but I have to do them standing up. Um, these are different ones, though. These are all the film stars, like John Wayne, James Stewart, Kurt Douglas, Burt Lancaster. But they're, I'm doing them different because they've all had a stroke. That's what you've got to remember. <laughs> okay? Mm. Have you got some Western music, please? <laughs> and oh. I've not got off my horse yet. <laughs> it's all right. I don't want to go too far. I'll stick to the white line. <laughs> Give me practice when I'm driving back. <laughs> I do drive. Mm -hmm. Right. Imagine these. Right, John Wayne. I'll tell you the first one because they all sound the same. <coughs> to look hard. You never know if there's going to be a gunfight then maybe James Stewart could be here. Hiya there, James. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I do of it. Oh, now just hang on. I guess that, oh, maybe if there is a gun, fine. Then maybe Kirk Douglas could be here. Uh, hiya, Kirk. Yeah. See you with your Viking. <laughs> I ain't gonna draw on a man who ain't got a gun. Maybe Bert Lancaster will. Oh, ho, ho. I want to tell you something. When you go for your gun, you better draw good. Because I'm going to blow your head right off your shoulders. Oh. James Mason. I'm going to go on a journey to the center of the earth. This will be called the Limbrook Expedition. Maybe Richard Burton could be here. The late, great Mr. Richard Burton. As you know, Liz and I have finally departed comes to us all in the end. When I met her at the altar, I gave her a ring, a diamond ring, the biggest diamond in the world. It had a diamond at the top, 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 top of the stone. <laughs> it had a diamond at the top, don't, 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 don't stop. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone, this will kill you. <laughs> Let me get the face. He <laughs> <coughs> doesn't really want to be you though. <laughs> hey, you know my brother Victor? Hey, Victor, Victor can take six pints of milk upstairs without even losing anything. The monkey belongs to me, Adrian. <laughs> it's not me really, is it? <laughs> the film stars anyway. <laughs> oh, bless you, thanks for that. <laughs> Oh. Christ, where do you get this from? Ken Barlow's room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just want to live long enough to see who pushed him down the stairs. <laughs> who do you think did it, eh? I think you are, Tracy. I'll never rest till I find out. Hmm. <laughs> Funny old game, isn't it? Anyway. Shall I do a song now? What, what, what do you want me to do as well? Two, two. 
Can we just stick a finger up my bum and give it to my elbow? Well done, mate. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, tell him. Thank the Norvell. Cool. <coughs> yeah, someone's here to see you. Hello. Duncan. Hey, up, Bob. I used to impersonate you. Hey. Before this dreadful thing happened to you, but to see this bravery of this man come out and uh, present what he does still, because his desire is to entertain you, this man needs a standing ovation, in my opinion. It is. It's been an honour to watch Thank you, you from the wings. Thanks, sir. Well done, Dan. Well, you, you can chase me anytime you want to, mate. <laughs> Sing your song. Duncan One more Norvell. time, in Duncan Norvell. Uh, right. Later, Jim. How about that? Right, we're just going to have a little change round. We're all going to sing a song at the end, and Duncan's coming in on that one, just so we get our timings right and everything. Um, <laughs> great to see Duncan back on the stage. Again, we've had the pleasure of the last few um, years working with Duncan. It's been a pleasure working Thank with you. such a legend, getting back on the stage. So one more time, ladies and gents. Come on, Mr Duncan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Sit back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop him. <laughs> One more time. Come on, there we go. How about that? Thank you. <laughs> Good but job we didn't do the risk assessment. Listen, it's been great so far, so great. Bit of comedy tonight. But um, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a few moments before the first half finishes. Uh, but I've got to tell you, when you're doing these shows, the greatest thing about it is, is that you do get... <laughs> <laughs> We need a bit more teddy bears picnic, don't we? <laughs> Brilliant. Have you seen the food back there? I ain't been. Who put